I was too far down for anybody to hear me. Nobody's gonna be looking down there anyway, so nobody's gonna find you. Once I'd come to, you know, it was up to me. I had to take the initiative to get myself up and out of there before I knew I could get any kind of help. The bike was minimal damage. Everything on it was just scrapes. I dislocated my shoulder. I had to put that back in. <laughs> And then it's just you climbing. <clears throat> How the f am I getting up there? Ha llegado tú primero, ¿no? Y segundo toma. No. So they knew something had happened when I hadn't come across the line ahead of them. That's because I was off the side of this cliff in a ravine. Nice to to finish. You first across the line? Yeah. Oh, you must have changed hard. Well done, yeah. Right up! Right up! Right up! Right up! You didn't say Thomas? I think Thomas is before to me. Yeah. When I arrived to the finish line, mm -hmm. I asked to Adria, Thomas is second, no. Thomas not Thomas is nowhere. I knew I could get up to the trail. And I knew that's what I had to do. You couldn't just give up. Oh. <laughs> it's all part of racing in India though. It's all calculated risks and deciding how hard you want to push yourself. There's no signage on the track saying you might want to dismount here or this is actually a technical section. You just have to yeah, take a bit of a risk. And see Thomas riding today, we were pretty confident he would win because he's just a maniac and he can ride really, really well. But um, you know, he's probably taken one risk too many. <laughs> Oh doggy, that was a, that was a f ride. I get to the very top. Oh. I was just absolutely exhausted. <clears throat> Got back on and crept down the mountain, walked a whole lot of single track. But I knew I had to make those last 30 kilometers or so back down the mountain. I wasn't gonna settle for a DNF. able to cross the finish line on my own in the GC fourth overall managed to finish the day so 
considering I'd lost so much time on that stage. I was super stoked about that. It was a epic week. <laughs> Today was just wild. Other than a little mishap, I wish I could have, uh, I, I think I could have taken the win easily. It was like a perfect stage for me and uh, yeah, it was awesome other than crashing. Good or no? Uh, I know I dislocated my shoulder, but I put it back in. You can. Here's Dad. We're off the mountain. Proper. Really? Yeah. Do you look in the top? No, no. I didn't see him. I know. Oh, yeah. I vanished. I hit a rock and I shot off the mountain. You'll have to see the video. <laughs> oh boy. Ah, okay. Can I see the video? Yeah, yeah perfect. We gotta watch it. <laughs> and then it was time to get cleaned up. All the cuts and scrapes were pretty small. I knew that hurt like a son of a. And they scrubbed all my wounds up, keep the risk of infection down, get everything as clean as possible. Going all out. Yeah. It's when you're in the really the chunder and the rough stuff. That's when you're focused and you're on your game and you don't crash. This. I didn't think anything of it, and uh, I went for a wild ride. This was an incredible event. Some of the best competition. We definitely had the hardest conditions to have to race through. I think this race had like an attrition rate of like 50%. It was just unheard of. same time it was super rewarding because those challenges that are the hardest that always have the most meaning and the most reward so smiles per mile I definitely had more of them after the event we finished in Burr which is the paragliding capital in Asia and it's something I've never done before and I figured this is going to be the place to do it your pilot's behind you and he says, when I tell you to run, you run. I will tell you one, two, three, run. Okay. Keep running, you're gonna say stop. Then only stop, if I don't say stop, keep running, okay? Okay. You're running off the face of a mountain, you're thinking, I don't think we're stopping. Well, now we're going. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're just cruising through the air. You'd climb up and then you'd stall out and then you'd drop back down. You know, and you're just thinking like, oh my God, I hope that thing doesn't collapse on itself. Totally exhilarating. Borderline magical, I'd say. You just can't get a perspective of India any other way than that. <laughs> Such an awesome experience. Bye. <laughs> We're down here in New Delhi. And the architecture here is absolutely amazing. Whether it's the Taj Mahal in Agra, temples, palaces, gates. Right here behind me is uh, the Indian Gate. You can see how just absolutely massive that thing is. Everything is just absolutely spectacular. The city life is so cool. It's a really neat place so many really bright, vibrant colors everywhere you look. Clothing and jewelry and TVs and shoes. If you need something, you can go to one of these markets, you're gonna find it. Any kind of food product you could possibly imagine. Oh yeah, that's worth it. Very diverse place for sure. We did get a little bit of a ride on the tuk-tuk before our flight. We took the tuk-tuk because Uber was taking way too long and this thing is so fast and nimble we could zip right through traffic so there was no delay. And we're making good time to the airport. We need to get there ASAP but we had to stop for gas. So hopefully we can keep going and make our flight. Thank 
Left at night time, slept for the flight, arrive in the morning, so it should be bright eyed and bushy tailed now. We'll see. That's my theory. <laughs> Well, that's a wrap for India. We're back in the States and this trip's over.